So, this is a uh, quick update on uh, my SB221 amplifier project, uh, just completed today on uh, May 2016. Uh, this amplifier was purchased from an estate sale in 2010 and it sat on a shelf. I really didn't know what to do with it. Uh, it wasn't working at the time, uh, but I didn't have uh, the, the inclination to dive into it and work on this high voltage equipment uh, until I really had a better idea what I was doing inside these things. It's a heat kit. Uh, was uh, hand built by a, uh, a happy owner back in 1978 and uh, was owned by a ham who uh, passed away in uh, 2005. Uh, I purchased it five years later in 2010. I don't believe it had been used uh, for some time even before uh, that fellow passed on. Uh, I'll tell you in a moment a little bit about what I found that was wrong with this uh, piece of equipment uh, once I opened it up. Uh, the reason I started working on this was this amplifier. This is my contesting amplifier. I have uh, purchased this one in 2006 and have been using it uh, in very intensive radio contesting use. It's an SB221. It had uh, 1995 date stamped iMac 3500Z tubes in it and uh, about a month ago it packed it in. Just died. So I opened it up. I found a blown, uh, blown resistor on the uh, one of the grid pins on a 3500Z tube, and uh, found the 82.82 uh, ohm uh, metering protection uh, resistor on the Harbuck uh, board had failed as well. So uh, there was definitely something uh, wrong with one of the tubes. Probably, I suspect, uh, a socket problem. Uh, I did find that uh, one of the tubes was quite loose in its socket, and uh, I tightened that, repaired all of the uh, socket issues that I could find, and I uh, decided that maybe if uh, one of the tubes was starting to fail that I would take them out, and so I borrowed the 1978 iMac 3500Zs from the uh, amplifier sitting on the shelf and put them in this one, and uh, with those repairs this amplifier came back to life and it has been working beautifully and uh, surprise surprise those 1978 iMac 3500Z tubes work beautifully and they put out as much power as the 1995 uh, uh, tubes that originally were in this contesting amplifier. Uh, I was surprised by that because these uh, 3500Z tubes are known to not age well unless they are in uh, regular use and uh, the tubes that are currently in this one again from 1978, had probably been on a shelf for at least 11 years. Plugged them in here, fired up the amp, and away they went. Uh, beautiful. Uh, and they put out uh, uh, just as much power as uh, uh, tubes that are uh, 20 years newer or close to it. So, this amplifier was working. I felt quite comfortable after having uh, repaired this amplifier that I, uh, if I didn't know what I was doing, I knew what not to do to, uh, in order to be safe. Uh, so I decided this project should begin. And so I opened this one up um, and began uh, assessing what needed to be done. It was uh, quite a bit, quite a bit of, uh, of uh, repair work uh, was needed uh, the, with a long list of uh, to-dos. So uh, among the changes were to replace the 1978 vintage uh, capacitor bank, the filter capacitors. This amplifier had these capacitors in it. These are 200 microfar microfarad capacitors. They're computer grade, uh, but they're from 1978, and these things do dry out and age over time, and, uh, and there's a chance that they could start to uh, pack it in under heavy, uh, heavy use. So what you see at the top of these capacitors, these green bars, are actually 30k um, uh, resistors and when I replaced these inside this amplifier I replaced them with uh, smaller more modern 330 microfarad capacitors they're actually about one-third the height of the ones that they replaced same diameter so they're a direct snap-in replacement um, and then I used uh, 100k resistors modern resistors that are much, much smaller, um, possibly one-fifth the size, um, or one-sixth the size of those green ones that you see in the image. And uh, they dissipate uh, a lot less heat, therefore the amplifier can run cooler. So, with the capacitor bank replaced in this one, uh, what other things did I have to do? Well, the meter, this meter, 
for some reason, the uh, meter had been wired with a reverse polarity, so that certainly wouldn't have been working if I had turned the amplifier on. But not only that, the top of the capacitor bank wire, the B- wire, wasn't even connected to anything. Uh, so this amplifier wouldn't have produced any power, wouldn't have received any power uh, from the capacitors, so it wouldn't have worked because of that. The metering switch, the high voltage position on the back of the switch, the lug was missing. There was no wire attached to it. Uh, a number of other issues inside the panel uh, in the way that this was wired together. Uh, I installed a new rectifier metering board, the original one from 1978. And here it is, is the piece that I removed. Uh, y you can see, if I can get some light on it, and here we go. You can see that there was, um, over the years, there have been a number of repairs made to this thing. Um, it was um, uh, probably uh, uh, the result of uh, tube arcing or a flashover or who knows, maybe a lightning strike. But uh, uh, the resistor at the top there uh, that I have removed clearly blew and uh, scorched the board and a number of other scorches that aren't just solder scorches. And the diode string itself. Uh, you can see that uh, over the years diodes had popped and have been replaced with a mishmash of different uh, of, uh, uh, diodes, different kinds. Uh, probably all the same uh, um, uh, uh, voltage rating, but uh, uh, larger and smaller. So I got a new one. Then I, uh, the 2016 version of the Harbach uh, SB220 uh, rectifier metering board uh, is installed in the uh, amplifier as part of the, the repairs. Uh, I also uh, replaced some of the wiring. Uh, not all of it was bad, but um, here's a bag of parts. That's all the gear that I took out. Uh, a diode string, a large beefy diode string. The, uh, the chokes that you see there are from uh, the grid pins on the 3500Z tubes. Uh, the braid that you can see is, uh, was removed from the anode circuit. Uh, so I did a number of modifications and uh, I've got a complete list of those uh, on my website uh, indicating what I had done and uh, uh, a little bit about how I did those changes. So, fired it up this afternoon after uh, a couple of weeks of uh, fairly intensive work on this in the evenings. Uh, some long nights studying uh, various websites and uh, documents. Uh, so I really understood what I was doing. Can't say I understood everything, but enough to, uh, to be dangerous, as they say. Uh, safety first. Uh, I was very careful about working uh, inside this amplifier. Uh, it had been unused for uh, 11 years, so I was pretty safe. There, there was no latent voltage uh, stored up in the capacitors or in uh, any of the circuitry. Um, but even after uh, I had started uh, testing it uh, with power, I was very cautious about uh, disconnecting everything and letting it sit for a while to discharge any of the um, voltage that might be stored up in those capacitors. So safety was uh, a priority for me. Didn't want to uh, go silent key for the sake of an amplifier. But it worked beautifully. Uh, so this is currently uh, using the 1995 uh, iMac 3500Z tubes that were formerly in this contesting uh, intensive use amplifier. And those tubes work just fine. Uh, the amplifier is... Um, indicating that it uh, has an amplification factor of around 10.5, which means 50 watts in is giving me more than 550 watts uh, of uh, power out to the antenna, uh, which is uh, just fine. It's right where it ought to be. Uh, the voltages uh, right now, the high voltage reading on the low voltage setting uh, for the CW switch setting is right around 2400 volts. And if I go to the SSB or the high voltage setting, which provides a little bit more power out, you can see that it pops up to 3,000 volts right on the nose, which is exactly where it ought to be. I'll just go back to the lower power setting there. There we go. So the amplifier is working very nicely. Uh, I will have a uh, much more involved write-up about uh, what I did to the amplifier on the site. And um, I'm going to go back to uh, testing it out. I've been using it this afternoon and evening in a couple of the QSO parties in uh, Morse code CW mode. 
and in the uh, uh, the Italian Ari teletype contest, which is a more intensive way of using an amplifier, and uh, it has been putting out uh, power nicely on 20 meters, 40 meters, and 80 meters. I haven't used 15 meters or 10 meters yet. Uh, those bands uh, appear to be declining with the sunspot cycle uh, waning here in 2016, uh, but there is still some 15 meter activity and CQ weird prefix WPXCW is coming up at the end of May and I will be using this amplifier as my go-to machine uh, to really give it a good workout and see what it's uh, capable of. Uh, I'll probably push its limits um, and uh, I have great faith that everything is going to work out in this thing, uh, from this uh, uh, rebuild and, and modification. So there you go, an SB221 brought back to life after more than 11 years of sitting on a shelf and it really deserves to be worked out. And uh, I'm a kind owner of an amplifier. Uh, I use them a lot, often, and I use them uh, with great kindness. Uh, don't uh, push them too hard uh, because I want them to last and they deserve to, uh, to be used. So happy to put this one back into service.